So this story right here drives me crazy, and this is not something that you're going to hear a lot about elsewhere. In fact, um, I, when I was looking for this last night, I only saw the New York Times article on it. I didn't see articles from other people or from other outlets. Now, maybe that's changed to this point, but um, it's kind of amazing that this isn't a huge deal. But of course, that's what you get with a shitty mainstream media. So credit to the New York Times, because this is very important reporting. A charity tied to the Supreme Court offers donors access to the justices. The Supreme Court Historical Society has raised more than $23 million in the last two decades, much of it from lawyers, corporations, and special interests. So look, when people think of the Supreme Court, you think of like, if you're naive, let's say, you would think of like very intelligent, intellectual, serious people in their robes who went to law school. They're massive nerds um, and they try to be as objective as possible in delivering you know, justice and, and interpreting the law and the Constitution. And I, I wouldn't blame somebody if they think that about the Supreme Court if they don't follow politics very closely. But the fact of the matter is, that's really not the case. You have it's a rank political body. And a lot of these people now come from the Federalist Society, which is just it's they're they're ideologues and they're demagogues and they're hardcore right wingers. And they put the facade, the veneer of intellectual seriousness over the decisions they make when really they're judicial activists. So they have an agenda and the agenda comes first and then they'll come up with some rationalization and interpretation of the law that backs up what they're saying. But now we also know not only are they just partisan hacks, in a sense, you also have, oh, they're deeply corrupt because you might think, oh, since they don't they don't run for election. Right. So there are no campaign contributions. So maybe they, they are kind of more pure and above the fray and they're not tainted by big money. Turns out, no, that is not the case. In some years, Chief Justice John G. Roberts does the honors and others. It might be Justice Sonia Sotomayor or Justice Clarence Thomas presenting the squared off hunks of marble affixed with the Supreme Court's gilded seal, hewed from slabs left over from the 1930s construction of the nation's high court and handed out in its magnificent great hall. They are a unique status symbol in a town that craves them. And while they're the ideological bents of the justices bestowing them might vary, there's one constant. All the receipts have given at least uh, all their, excuse me, recipients <laughs> receipts have given at least $5,000 to a charity favored by the justices. And more often than not, the donors have a significant stake in the way the court decides cases. The charity of the Supreme Court, the charity, the Supreme Court Historical Society is ostensibly independent of the judicial branch of government. But in reality, the two are inextricably intertwined. The charity's stated mission is straightforward, to preserve the court's history and educate the public about the court's importance in American life. But over the years, the society has become a vehicle for those seeking access to nine of the most reclusive and powerful people in the nation. The justices attend the society's annual black tie dinner sorries. I don't know how you say that word, where they mingle with donors and thank them for their generosity and serve as MC to more regular society sponsored lectures or reenactments of famous cases. The society, the society has raised more than 23 million over the last two decades. Some of its nonprofit status because of its nonprofit status, it does not have to publicly disclose its donors and declined when asked to do so. But the New York Times was able to identify the sources Behind more than 10.7 million raised since 2003, the first year for which relevant records were available, at least 6.4 million, or 60%, came from corporations, special interest groups, or lawyers and firms that argued cases before the court. According to an analysis of archived historical society newsletters and publicly available records that detail grants given to the society by foundations. Of that, at least 4.7 million came from individuals or entities in years when they had a pending interest in a federal court case on appeal or at the high court records show. Now, they go on to explain here. The donors include corporations like Chevron, which gave while embroiled in a 2021 Supreme Court case involving efforts by cities to hold the oil company accountable for its role in global warming. Veteran Supreme Court litigators gave while representing clients before the court that included Tyson Foods and the Ministry of Commerce of the People's Republic of China. In the past, we talked about how, hey, hold on, if a Supreme Court's wife or a Supreme Court justice's wife or husband, they were taking money from X thing or they sit on the board of Y company, well, then the, the justice should recuse themselves from cases involving that company. And they don't. 
There is no code of ethics for the Supreme Court. So they'll make decisions when they're biased. Like, uh, Clarence's, Clarence Thomas's wife was involved in January 6th and was plotting to overthrow the election. And, you know, he's not going to fucking recuse himself from any January 6th related case. So that, that's bad enough, right? What we're learning here is it gets way, way worse than that. This Supreme Court charity is basically being courted by corporations and billionaires, people with, with cases in front of the court. So let me ask you a question. Why do you think they're giving? Why do you think they're giving? Do you think it's just, oh, I believe in the institution of the Supreme Court, and so I'm giving out of the goodness of my heart? No, it is an attempt at a bribe. It's corruption. You should not be able to take money for your charity from somebody who's, you're adjudicating their case. Are you insane? I mean, this is astounding. This is like, they have no credibility anymore. There is no credibility. And the biggest, like the most annoying part of the Supreme Court is just how much they suck themselves off about how like independent and objective and intelligent and above the fray they are. They all talk all the time like, oh no, us bro, we don't even put our opinion in the mix. What we do is we just like, we just interpret the law and the constitution as it is and then apply justice fairly. Like that's all we do. That is not true at all. That's not true at all. And the Supreme Court, uh, you know, in the modern era, from Reagan and onward, the Supreme Court has become a massively pro-corporate body. You know, in the New Deal era, they weren't so pro-corporate. You know, when, you know, FDR made it so that the New Deal got through the Supreme Court over the years, the, the makeup of the court, the Thurgood, Thurgood Marshall Court was, um, was good, right? They did good things. I think they interpreted the law in a reasonable way. And then now you have this neoliberal corporate era and the justices on the court are not only ideologically in that neoliberal camp, but they're also paid by these corporations. And so, wow, would you look at that? They seem to quite often side with corporate rule. It's fucking astonishing, man. This shouldn't be allowed. I mean, this should be allowed. There's no Supreme Court code of ethics. They need to make one immediately. They need to make one immediately. And the other point is, and this is super important, I talked about this recently with Tom Hartman, um, we need to start utilizing what's called court stripping more often. There's a part of the Constitution, what is it, Article 3, Section 2? Um, I don't remember exactly where it is in the Constitution, but uh, it's jurisdictional stripping or court stripping. What that means is the Congress can decide, if they want to, to pass a law and then put in the law, and oh, by the way, the Supreme Court is not allowed to rule on this. That's perfectly legal. In fact, it's very clear cut that that is allowed. But they never do that. And so what happens oftentimes is, even if you have like a President Bernie Sanders and he got like Medicare for all through or something, the Supreme Court could just say, no, we say that's unconstitutional. You're not allowed to do that. We're going to slap it down. And it's like, well, then this is, the court has become a tyrannical body. The court has overruled the people's body and even quite literally in many instances, the will of the people. Why should we let that stand? Why should we allow that? This authoritarian group of old douchebags in robes? We're just supposed to say, no, they get to veto whatever the fuck we want. No. No, at least with the president, if they veto something or whatever, at least they were democratically elected, so there's some sort of argument there. With the Supreme Court, they're not. So, and now we know, again, it's not just, oh, we're just interpreting the law fairly. No, it's, you are even paid by a lot of these people who you're supposed to adjudicate fairly on. You should definitely recuse yourself from every case where you take money from these people, and you shouldn't be allowed, through your charity or otherwise, to take any money through these people. If you're going to be on the court, if you're going to be in government, if you're going to be in public service, fucking serve. This is the same thing we say about stock trading uh, in Congress. It shouldn't be allowed. If you want to get into public service, okay, bitch, do public service. Uh, there should be no private financing of elections. There should be no stock trading in Congress. I'd be fine with paying them handsomely, pay them well, pay them more than what they get paid right now, but they are not allowed to trade stocks. They're not allowed to take money, private donations from corporations, billionaires, or others, other special interests, lobbyists. No. So now you know. Now you know. They're also just... The type of corruption that the Supreme Court has is very similar to the type of corruption that you see in Congress, too. It's amazing to me that they were able to get away with it for this long. 
where there was no specific reporting on it. We didn't know the ins and outs of it. And now we know. Steven Donziger was talking about this. Steven Donziger is a hero. He showed how oil companies were poisoning countries in, in South America. And, uh, you know, he blew the whistle on that. He went after them. And the oil companies, Chevron, ruined his fucking life. And then now you got the court ruling on this shit and they're taking money from them? This, this is farcical. This is Banana Republic type shit. We need a Supreme Court code of ethics right now. They need to be forced to recuse themselves from anything where they've taken money in any way, shape, or form. And by the way, they shouldn't, again, they shouldn't be allowed to take any of this money. This is insanity. And now you know, the Supreme Court is not just ideological, an extremist, an activist. They're also deeply corrupt. Ever since Adpocalypse, when YouTube defunded all independent news and politics overnight, we haven't trusted them. We know they can pull the rug out from underneath us at any time. If you enjoy this content, please consider tipping a dollar or two per month on the Secular Talk Patreon. Link in the video description box below. Thanks for your support.